Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, nobody's going to out entrepreneur the United States. <laughs> Sounds like famous last words. Uh, and um, the idea of a public private partnership when it comes to space, the idea of an ecosystem uh, brings back memories of my law school days when people were saying we should have a course at Yale Law School on the law of space. Um, only at Yale Law School would anyone make that suggestion. And it was uh, dismissed as one of those bubblehead you know, um, imaginary topics. But there is no real law of space, is there? I mean, and should there be? Should we be thinking about if we're going to have commercialization in space? Uh, you compared it, administrator, to uh, flying into other countries, but there is a means of enforcement there. You can ground pilots. You can take action that provides enforcement of rules of the road, so to speak, rules of the sky, rules of landing and taking off and equipment and so forth. But there isn't any in space. And so, I mean, if there are three or four commercial flights going up on the same day, maybe from the same place, uh, you got a lot, you're going to have a lot of objects up there you already have a lot of objects bumping into each other, except they just don't have human beings on them. And having human beings and having commercialization for expanded purposes, either of surveillance or other missions, um, complicates it. Should we, we be thinking about laws and enforcement mechanisms in space? So, Senator, as the only recovering attorney on this panel, I may go ahead and uh, take that one. And for the record, it's not just Yale. I'm actually giving a lecture at Georgetown Law School tomorrow on space law. So it's certainly yeah, taken, uh, taken root. Um, I do want to open with that there are laws in space. There's the Outer Space Treaty of 1967. There's the Registration Convention, the Agreement on the Rescue of Astronauts. So there are a series of international agreements that set rules that nearly every country or spacefaring country certainly have agreed to abide by. However, there is a substantial gap that you're pointing out now where in the Outer Space Treaty in Article 6, it requires authorization and continuing supervision of private sector activities. And we here in the US have yet to define how that continuing supervision will occur for non-traditional activities, be it satellite servicing, which we've mentioned, private sector space station, orbital debris removal, rovers, commercial rovers on the moon, we haven't defined that yet. We've been using Band-Aid solutions via the FAAST and the FCC, but one of the most important things that Congress could do would address this issue, just create a process that's predictable and we know what to do here in the US, because frankly, it's a competitive issue. That predictability is key for investment, and if we want to keep our countries here and keep innovation and keep entrepreneuring here in America, we need a predictable, reliable, and transparent regulatory system for commercial activities, which we don't have explicitly yet. I think that's an excellent answer, and uh, obviously um, I should have been more, more definitive or more specific uh, in saying there's no law. Uh, there are, in fact, gaps in the law, uh, which means I probably should attend your lecture tomorrow at Georgetown. Um, and I realize that, that law is the least glamorous or exciting aspect of space exploration, but I'm very interested in your answer that, I, as in many other areas of life, certainty and predictability are very important for the risk takers and the scientists to make progress. Exactly. If you're going to invest, the last thing you want to see is an unpredictable regulatory environment. If you're going to insure an activity, you need that certainty. So 
I know it's not as sexy as fun, but it can be as important as any technological development to space not only occurring, but particularly occurring here in the United States. Spoken like a true recovering lawyer. Thank you. Thank you all for your testimony today. And uh, it's been very enlightening. I've been following it from afar in between hearings. And we really thank you for being here.